So this dude here, the one closest to me on the left, giving you, in my opinion, conspiracy theory, whatever, a little bit of a shifty eye, he's the dude that killed Michael Jackson. What the deuce? He's supposed to be a doctor, right? Whatever happened to do no harm? <laughs> up everyone it's me steph the alter nerd your nerdy alternative and welcome to another dose of the daily nerd where i break down today's crime story that's pretty much caught me eye and yes you read the title correctly a doctor killed michael jackson what's the real reason behind the death of this goat greatest of all time entertainer singer and everything else in between i'm gonna break it down for you in a moment but before we do so do me a favour, will ya? There's a shiny red subscribe button just below me. Give that a good old tickle if you don't mind. Like, share, comment, all of that good stuff. And let's jump into it, shall we? So the doctor in question was Dr. Conrad Murray. Now, he was convicted in November 2011 of involuntary manslaughter. Uh, and he served less than two years out of a four-year sentence for this particular crime. Now, that's especially important for me to point out at this point because that's technically what he was convicted of. That's technically what he was found guilty of, right? But, in my opinion, conspiracy theory, whatever, for the remainder of this video, I am under the belief that this doctor outright killed Michael Jackson. Like, killed him. Ended him. Done and dusted, right? Why do I say that? Well, this particular article from Medium pretty much explains it to a T. Now, he, Michael Jackson was ready to start the shows at the O2 London Arena the, for the This Is It uh, shows. Uh, there were a buttload. He was practicing. He, he, you know, he was gearing up for it. There was a buttload of money getting plowed into these shows. It was going to be massive. It was going to be freaking epic. However, it wasn't meant to be. Now, on the night of the June 24th, after rehearsing for his tour, he returned to the mansion at Cowwood Drive in LA, where that's where he passed away. Now, at the time, it was mysterious circumstances because he was fine. There was nothing wrong with him. Per se, we didn't think that, you know, he was suffering from any disease or condition or anything like that that would have caused his life to end. This was proper out of the blue, right? Came to a total shock, as this article says there, to literally everyone. It was like, what the hell? Am I reading this right? Michael Jackson is gone? What? That was what it was like. Now, <clears throat> what happened was on 25th of June, uh, a security guard called 911 around noon. The only other witness other than this security guard was this doctor called Conrad Murray. He was a physician who informed that Michael Jackson wasn't breathing. And I tell you something, as a doctor, I'm not a doctor, but <laughs> if I was a doctor, right? You could call me Dr. Steph. Um, if I was looking after a patient, let alone freaking Michael Jackson, the most famous person in the freaking world, the GOAT, the greatest of all time, singer, entertainer, performer. And in my care, he all of a sudden stops breathing. Oh my goodness, I would freak the hell out. I would be like, no, 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 what the hell just happened? Ah! I, yeah, I would proper freak out, right? What did he do though? Well, we'll get on to that. Now, up until that point, it was just simply an investigation in the sense of he's passed away, but no real suspicion of foul play. Now, Dr. Murray was the only witness to Michael Jackson's last moments. He left the hospital, though, shortly afterwards, so the detectives at the time no longer had any access to the information about how or why he may have passed away. Uh, the emergency room physician initially thought, you know what, looks like a heart attack. And it looks like, you know, Michael Jackson, 
he passed away peacefully, right? Hindsight, though, we know, unfortunately, that was not the case. Now, this is only speculated. However, it's highly, highly believed uh, by the investigators um, and the prosecutors that this is actually what went down. So in Jackson's last moments, they state and believe that Dr. Murray probably treated him in a room that served as like a quasi-medical facility. So, you know, that you've got the saline bag, the IV stand, all the various uh, medications. And there was this bottle of propofol. Now, what is it? Now, this is anesthesia that's used during surgery. Now, wait on a minute, you may ask. He wasn't undergoing any surgery, Michael Jackson. So why would this particular substance be just hanging around, lounging about in Michael Jackson's room? Just chilling out as if, you know, not to see here, right? Why would that be? Well, going a little bit backwards in time. When Michael Jackson passed away, it was uncovered that, unfortunately, he spent a lot of his life actually in pain. And it began back in 1984, so about two years, actually, before I was born. Um, he was shooting a commercial shoe, and there was this pyrotechnic that just completely went off this firework, and it caught him on fire, his whole, like, hair. I remember seeing the, like, video of it. It's horrific, right? Now, as a result, that's when he started taking pain medication. Now, in 1997, so over a decade later, he's performing, and all of a sudden, as he's performing, he's 50 foot in the air on this aerial platform, and somehow he falls off of that, drops 50 feet below, like gravity, like no mercy whatsoever, right? Now, this accident permanently damages his spine which I'm not surprised, but I'm shocked it didn't do any worse. Um, he then at that point becomes dependent on pain medication pretty much for the rest of his life at that point. Now, besides suffering from pain, he also had insomnia, so he found it very, very difficult to sleep. Now, now I, I won't get into too much detail, but I can kind of understand that, and the reason being is because I suffer from a type of pancreatitis, and... My pain management now, it's proper under control. My pain clinic doctors are freaking geniuses, right? Um, but as we were trying to figure out how to control my condition the best way possible pain-wise, oh my goodness, sleep-wise was all over the place. I was absolutely screwed. So I can understand how pain can affect your sleep and give you insomnia. Now, sometimes it's reported he wouldn't be able to sleep for more than three days. Now, in the years that followed, he is introduced to this propofol. Now, he was so used to sleeping using this substance that he even called it his milk. And for the remainder of this video, that's exactly what I'm going to be calling it. Michael Jackson's milk. And that's because of YouTube. Okay, <laughs> bear that in mind, guys. Now, even his last words were reportedly, I'd like to have some milk. Please, please give me some milk so that I can sleep because I know that this is all that really works for me. Scary. Scary. This is an anesthetic that's used for surgery. Surgery. It will knock out a freaking elephant kind of anesthetic right and this doctor is just you know living it large being all casual and all that malarkey and he's like you know what i know what will help you make you sleep S anesthetic that's used for surgery ding 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 best idea of all time right out of all the medication that is accessible for this doctor, he thinks the best idea in the whole wide world to treat insomnia is giving the patient anaesthetic that's used for surgery. When you think about it that way, if your mind is not blown right now, dude, 
Why? <laughs> Why? This is nuts. This is freaking insane, right? So, why is it called, why did Michael Jackson call it milk? Well, here's a picture of the said substance, right? It looks like milk, doesn't it? It's got that creamy milk-like colour. So, yeah, that's why he, Michael Jackson, eloquently uh, called it his milk. Um, now, only, 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 the, o the only person that could try and freaking explain why Michael Jackson was taking this milk, right, is Dr. Murray himself. Now, during an interview, that this doctor had with the LAPD, the Los Angeles Police Department, he admitted using Michael Jackson's milk for months to help him sleep. Now, my opinion, conspiracy theory, whatever, I call BS on that. I think he used it for longer, to be fair. Um, now, he acted as if it was no big deal for him. Each night, Dr. Murray would give uh, the milk at home without the necessary equipment that's crucial to the process. Now, that's a big, big, massive, like, scary situation there. Because if you're giving this big, massive-ass, powerful, like, substance, medical substance, you need to have the right equipment to make sure that you're doing everything in your power to ensure the patient is going to be fine. But, no, nah, it, it, it's just like, yeah, it's just lounging around. The milk's just hanging out in back over there. Let me just get it out of freaking kitchen cupboard and, you know, you can have a bit of a swig. And then we'll just put it back. That is t so cavalier. It is untrue. It's scary. It's scary. How there's doctors in the world that act like this with their patients. It's nuts. Now, negligence of the doctor. I mean, that's a proper understatement there. Now, how can a doctor not realize that what he is doing and administering this milk is wrong and completely out of order, right? How could he have not come to that realization and tried to stop this, right? Well, on the final night of giving Michael Jackson his milk, the doctor leaves the room for a few minutes, but that's all it takes. During that time, Michael Jackson, he stops breathing. Now, in medical terms, that's called, according to this article, a respiratory attack. Now, at that stage, he still had a chance to be saved. The doctor does CPR, but it's ineffective because he's not able to assess the situation. However, the unexpected discovery of the case was when Dr. Murray accidentally revealed where he hid his medical bag. Now, in retrospect... It was apparent that Dr. Murray took his time to clean up the mess he had created during the emergency. The bag had the, uh, the needles and the numerous medical substances, which he allegedly tried to conceal. Now, what could be the reasons for him trying to hide it? Was the suspicious passing of Michael Jackson more than just giving him an excessive amount of medical substance? Now, do you start to realize why, in my opinion, conspiracy theory, whatever, Michael Jackson was killed? He was killed, right? Because why else? Why else? Like, go straight to the notion of patients suffering from insomnia, can't sleep. So do you know what? I'm going to give him a, a powerful surgery uh, anesthetic. Oh, and when I give him it, at one point, I'm just going to leave the room. Yeah, okay, okay. One thing I can say is when, in, in my personal experience, when a patient takes pain medication or anything, they, the body gets used to a certain amount that's given, right? The body gets used to it. So for me, in this instance, what went wrong where Michael Jackson passed away? And my opinion, conspiracy theory, whatever, is that I believe Michael Jackson was given more of the milk than usual. 
You see where I'm coming from there? Now. Huh. The LAPD went ahead to search the places where Dr. Murray was residing. Um, they did find a receipt hidden behind a bookcase at uh, his girlfriend's apartment. Um, and he used that home of his girlfriend to receive shipments of Michael Jackson's milk. Um, Michael Jackson did like, quote unquote, doctor shopping, trying to figure out which doctor would be more amenable to get him his milk. Um, none of the other doctors were like, yeah, we'll help. Instead, they were like, um, there's the door on the way out. <laughs> Shut it behind you, please. Um, now... <laughs> Dr. Murray offered the milk as a reliever of pain, but sadly, he also thought it was the best way to help him sleep. It's nuts. It's nuts. And this is a big, massive question. How come a doctor who is known for their ethics would risk a patient? How? Now, he had several children and he had huge debts. Uh, to get young women into relationships, he would exploit the fact that he was close to a celebrity. So this doctor is a sleazebag anyway, let alone everything else on top, which in my opinion, conspiracy theory, whatever, he's a killer. Uh, Murray was penalized by several medical boards in many other states. In short, in, everything in his life was just a complete total mess and he was in desperate need of cash. Um, so there you go. You've got a doctor where his life's a mess and he's in desperate need for money. And when people are in desperate need for money, they will go sometimes to great evil lengths to get money and get out of the mess that they're in, right? So this is when the LAPD discovered a contract between Murray and the AEG, the company that was managing Michael Jackson's comeback tour. So do you remember when I said pretty much right at the beginning, there was this, this is it tour, right? In London, the O2 Arena, massive money was going to be spent, but even massive amounts of money was going to be gained back. This was going to be profitable to, like, the heaven and back, right? Michael insisted on the company allowing Dr. Conrad Murray to travel with him. He needed him because no other doctor was going to give him his milk. No other doctor was stupid and crazy enough and evil enough to do it. Dr. Conrad, though, was. Now, later on, uh, he gave his version of what had happened that night. He said that he only gave Michael the initial uh, dose of milk before he went to sleep. And while Murray made a phone call, uh, Michael would put himself on a drip. And in the end, jury, when he argued that in court, weren't convinced and sentenced that monster to four years in prison. Tell you something though, it should have been longer. It should have been longer than that. Um, despite Michael Jackson's condition being known to his close circle of business partners, no one truly wanted to help him get off his milk. Uh, the pop sensation and the idol of music could have been saved. If someone truly cared for him, he would have been sent to rehab and might have lived a little longer. And this is the thing, right? No one cared, in my opinion, conspiracy theory, whatever, about Michael Jackson and his welfare and his being. It seemed to be a freaking open secret about Michael Jackson's milk, right? And what Dr. Conrad Murray was doing. But at the end of the day, as long as they got their cash, their moolah, that was all that mattered, in my opinion, conspiracy theory, whatever. And with this doctor, scaringly enough, Allegedly, my opinion, he was no different. His life was a mess. He was in debt. You have a financial motive right there alone for this doctor to unethically give Michael Jackson this milk. Right? But guess what? It goes even deeper than that, because if you do your research, right, because this video is pretty long, I'm not going to go through it right now. But if you do your research, Michael Jackson, in the end, worth more 
dead than alive. So I go back to an original point that I made, right, which is this. I know this for a fact because I've been through it. I've had to rely on pain medication at certain points in my life to control my pancreatitis condition, right? When, when a pain, um, when someone in pain has to manage their condition and take medication, they get used to a certain dose, right? They get used to it. And that's it. It, do, it rarely, rarely, rarely causes them any trouble, right? Now, if we take Dr. Conrad Murray at his word, doctor at the time, yeah, he was giving Michael Jackson his milk for months, right? That would have given, in my opinion, the time needed for Michael Jackson to get used to a certain dose, a certain maximum dose, right? So that his body wouldn't freak out and, you know, he, 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 it, 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 wouldn't, it, it basically wouldn't end him, is what I'm trying to say. But if he's giving this medication, this milk for months, right, and he's used to a certain level of it, then what changed that night where Michael Jackson then passed away from it? If he just gave the standard normal level of his milk, then nine times out of ten, there wouldn't have been anything wrong. My opinion, conspiracy theory, whatever, which rounds off my reasoning as to why I believe this doctor killed Michael Jackson, not only for the financial incentive in regards to being paid to provide this milk when he shouldn't have done, and that he's better dead than alive, Michael Jackson, in terms of his worth, but the other reason, I think the doctor killed Michael Jackson because I believe that Michael Jackson was given more of his milk than usual. More of his milk than usual. That put his body in a shock. That caused him to stop breathing. And eventually caused him to pass away. Does that make sense? This doctor, in my opinion, killed Michael Jackson. However, again, it's very, very clear. I have to be clear on this. He was prosecuted and convicted of involuntary manslaughter. I have to be very clear. That was what he was convicted of. But I think it should have gone further. And I think he should have been brought up on murder charges and convicted of murder simple as that what do you guys think though to what i've just laid out for you let me know in the comments down below and if you like this and you want to see more daily nerds then by all means if you haven't done so already that shiny red subscribe button give it a nice old tickle for me will you like share comment all of that good stuff and until the next time you guys Laters.